813. Phil Collins, Vintage, from the album But Seriously, released in 1989. Find a way to my heart. On, on, on the first day of uh, February, mm-hmm. you need songs like this. You know, you've, you've, I think you started the morning very well because if we don't play songs like this to uplift ourselves... You'll be doomed, you'll be depressed. Yeah, because I, going through the Instagram headlines... Just so, a raft of new so things. So many mm-hmm. bad yeah. things are happening this <laughs> they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are necessarily bad. For your pocket, <laughs> at least. So they are raising a passport but, charge. You're going to, they are raising passport charge. Yes, okay. they are raising passport charge from oh, today. Okay. You're going to pay the emissions levy today. What is, is going the emissions on. levy? No? What is it? The emissions the levy is a greenhouse tax. So for all cars that use fossil fuels, even before um, EVs are fully functional in Ghana, the government is taxing flat rate from 75 cities to 300 cities per vehicle per year. Okay. The GPRT say they're going to apply that to hey, transport double, fares. Double, so they want to double. do this. ACG says they're going to go from house to house to make sure that, and which is a good thing, you're going to audit yeah. meters, but yeah. inevitably leads to you paying more for power. Yeah. Right? So you're going to pay more for transport, you're going to pay more for power. Tell is on strike. It means that your students are not even getting the proper yeah, education yeah, yeah. because they're half of the workers are not even going to work. All right, and do, so many things. Last that's not doing well. If you want a passport, you're going to pay more for it today. I think there are a few more things happening. And Momo, Momo, what's happening, Momo? If you want to deposit anything beyond a thousand Ghana cities in your own mo- mobile money account, they will charge you. What kind of madness? Been ongoing since November. Who's going to be absolute madness? Who's going to charge you? Where if I you? take my money to the bank, where, where were you? No, wait. Hold on. I, I, I just no, explain. became aware yesterday. Explain. And I'm outraged. Explain. Bernard. Explain. You so know what happened that yesterday. Tell us what happened yesterday. Uh-huh. So I wanted to put money in my account, mm-hmm. right? Okay. I got some loose from money. cash or from your bank. No, from cash. Okay. So I will take it to the Momo agent. Momo agent, hand it over to him. That oh, put X amount of money mm-hmm. on my mobile money account for mm-hmm. me, so that when I needed to make some payment, I would effect payment mm-hmm. without any problem. Now I went to the guy, and then I said, "Oh, they should." Deposit 2,000 uh, Ghana CDs in my account. Now the guy looks at me and says, that, No, anything beyond 1,000 Ghana CDs, I would have to pay a charge for it. I said, ah. How? When did this policy happen? It's my own account. It's mm-hmm. not like I you have to mobile... your... So they are, they are basically saying, Keep your money in your house. Yes. They are punishing you. You know what's funny, Sky? Almost every policy, a digital policy that this government has pursued on the Momo side completely undermines every claim the vice president makes about building a digital economy. Yeah. Because you say you want to build an economy which is cash light. Mm-hmm. So we have all these discussions and you say you want people to use money in the ecosystem because it reduces corruption. Mm-hmm. Then you go and apply an obnoxious e-levy which leads to reduction in people's usage. Mm-hmm. Now you want to charge people for transferring money from their bank account into their momo. Mm-hmm. I have money in the bank and I want to pay through momo or vice versa. They are charging you. Now you go and deposit cash to momo agent, they are charging you. Mm-hmm. So even though they will say on one hand, we are building a digital economy, the fiscal policies of government on taxation clearly show it doesn't either believe in the digital economy or it's just a ruse. Because yeah. you cannot tell me that if I take 1,000 CDs to go and put in my own momo account, mm-hmm. To, to achieve the so-called digitalization agenda, mm-hmm. the cash light agenda, the wise thing to do is to say, I will punish you for... Oh, so, so because but if, I, if, I keep, if I keep that thousand cities in my house, mm-hmm. nobody's going to tax me for it. But hold on. No. We might... We, is it official? Was it, did the guy tell you it's official? Because... Somebody also tells me mm-hmm. it's not on official. Let me tell you something. Charge. Do you know? Be- so is that is the agent who is agent can, agent cannot take you. a charge? I'll tell you something. I work with artisans. I have a plumber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These days, when I want to pay these guys, mm-hmm. they say, "Mommy, cash." Mm-hmm. There are so many people now. When you work with them and you say you want to send money to, them, I say, "No, no, for, for cash." So the the digital agenda is seriously under threat. Yeah. Do you get me? And I don't understand why a policy. See, this is what you do when you want to get people into an ecosystem. You make it easy at the beginning to harvest everybody. Yeah. Then when they get used to the service, you mm-hmm. introduce the taxes bit by bit. Mm-hmm. But what these guys are doing is they are basically trying to tell you mm-hmm. that if you put money in Momo, we are you going to punish it. you. You get it? So I don't really know who's taking these decisions, whether the Ministry of Finance and the GRA are in sync with the so-called digital agenda. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. You know? It and doesn't. so now, transfers from your own bank account mm-hmm. to your own Momo account, your own Momo wallet, they are, and they are not even honest enough to tell you. So people are seeing it at the back end. A number of people have sent me slips showing that when they tra- transferred money, you know that service is quite a good service. Yeah, a good so service. you don't need to go to the bank. Mm-hmm. You have money in your bank account. Yes, you want to make a Momo transaction because maybe you pay your ECG through Momo. Mm-hmm. 
you go to your bank, you pull the money mm -hmm. into your wallet and you make the payment. Mm -hmm. That's what a good digital ecosystem is supposed to do mm -hmm. because you can then track it. Mm -hmm. If I came and give Nathan 1,000 CDs in his you pocket, the government doesn't know. Mm -hmm. But if I send Nathan 1,000 CDs by Momo, the government knows. The so the government should actually be paying me mm -hmm. for using Momo. A, a do, you, do, you get, do you get my logic? Mm -hmm. But for some strange reason, the government thinks that by punishing people for using Momo, they will promote digital economy. I don't get it. It's, it's, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. I don't get it. You know? So I really don't know what the people from the vice president team will be saying about this. But honestly speaking, it's a terrible policy. We'll come back to this topic shortly. But if you own a car, there's only one reliable place you can insure your car. It's called Sooner Assurance because we are the most advanced with branches across the country. Call or send us a message on 055-271-980. That's 055-257-1980. And you will know everything you need to know about Sunu Assurances. We're running a promo currently that comes with lots of souvenirs. With Sunu, you can be rest assured that our future, your future is assured. Now get the best returns on your investment. Invest with iVest, a secured fixed-term investment from Easeway that offers so much more with a minimum of 5,000 CDs over a uh, minimum period of three months. Increase your earnings by investing over a maximum period of 12 months. Times are hard, so invest right. Call Easeway now on 0596-914843 or text iVest, I-V-E-S-T, to 4993 to get started. Easeway is your trusted financial solutions partner and is a member of the Ghana Deposit Protection. Corporation. Yafinio, Yafini Enterprise Insurance is the leader in general insurance since 1924 and it has been in that position for 100 plus years. Now, this time they are giving away great prizes in the Yafini Motor Insurance promo. And lucky we now will drive off in a new Nissan Kicks SUV while runners up will get um, Dubai or the go, go, go to Dubai. All on Enterprises tab. You can call Enterprise on 0302-634-777 or call any of your agents or any of their agents or your broker to sign up. Enterprise Insurance is your advantage. Now, the Bank of Africa is offering interest, is offering loans at great interest rates, 10% for personal loans to meet all these requirements commitments at the start of a new year public sector workers can get up to 12 months of their salary so get in touch with the bank of africa on 030 or 030 to find out more the promo runs up until the end of march 2024 bank of africa strong as a group as close as a partner let's talk to Nina kenna shigui is the ceo of chamber of telecoms there are three issues here e-levy has been on for a few years and I think it's not helped. We'll talk about that. There's also the fear and the claim that there are people who are charged for transferring money from their Momo wallet into their bank account and vice versa. Then there's the latest claim by Richard Kai that he wanted to deposit money into his own account mm -hmm. and the Momo agent was trying to charge him money. Now, let me start with that because I'm not sure that's official yet. Engineer Kenashik based on the line. Good morning, sir. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Let's start with the first one. Richard Kai is claiming that yesterday he, should, he went he to deposit report, he money. Report. You should report that agent, agent to uh, one, whichever network it is, and even to the police. There's no charge for depositing money into your own account. There's no charge on it. Not for any network? No, 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 no. There's no charge on it at all. If it's Richard's own account that he was, you know, putting money in, there's no charge on it. So, Sky, you've been robbed? Yes, he has been robbed. You've been robbed. Second point. Money from my bank to my Momo wallet and vice versa. I used to do that regularly. Lots of people are saying that now somehow they are being charged either a fee or something. What's the position on that matter? Okay, so what, what should happen is that once uh, your bank account and your mobile money account has the same Ghana card, uh, you know, used in registering it, the system sees it as yourself, and so there should be no charge on it. Um, there were situations where, the, in terms of the card capture on either the bank side or the uh, the mobile the number side, the mobile money side, w might have issues. And there was something that over the Christmas holidays we're dealing with that to make sure that those are aligned. So if you have a situation like that, you should report to either your bank or your uh, mobile money uh, company. It should not. You know, the law is very specific. Transfers between yourselves on different wallets or into different bank accounts are not supposed to attract any charges at all. 
So if you are charged, it's likely that there are different Ghana card details on the exactly. account. Exactly. Now, what updates have to be done on on one of the sides, you know, to make sure that all of them uh, are speaking to each other. So that if there are two different persons, then it's treated as a transaction, for which reason a charge would apply. Is that what I yes, see? This? Yes, yes. Because what, hap- what will happen is that the system, um, the LMAS uh, that uh, GRA uses to authorize uh, the charging entities, either the banks or the EMIs, looks for that unique identifier. And the unique identifier for us as individuals is our um, Ghana card number. Uh, when it is businesses, you know, the likelihood of if there's an old thing, they could look at it. That is also, that's also possible. But for yourself, it would, the Ghana card should be on your bank side as well as on your uh, mobile money side so that it would see it as the same person and then it would say that charge that transaction is exempt and you don't have to pay yeah but, but Ken, from the ghana card system we know you cannot have two ghana card numbers because i've checked this if you push your name into the you ghana cannot, card system you cannot yes yeah, so cannot. so if i have a mtn account and I have a gcb uh, bank account if my name is bernard avle and i have one ghana card number there's no way that is GCB will have a different Ghana card from MTN? So the possibility that may be on any of the sites, uh, you know, there's the, um, your data has not been updated would be the only reason why this will happen. So maybe previously you were using an, uh, a previous ID uh, to do the transaction and maybe the update was not done. You know, that, that could be uh, not done properly. That could be the only reason that, that is happening. So if there is a charge, it's basically an update issue. So if you've done it with Ghana Cut on both sides and it's still happening, please just report to uh, either your bank or the, the EMI and they, that, that should be resolved and that, that charge should be refunded uh, to mm. you. Fair enough. But for those for whom the, the money is charged, it's a 1% charge is it a momo charge on e-levy the reason i ask is that there was no official announcement of this people just woke up one morning and realized that three weeks ago when they sent money from their momo to their wallet in the bank there was no charge and they started getting a one percent charge we haven't been told what charge it is whether it's a processing fee whether it's a momo charge or e-levy is that not odd so I, I, you see, I, I would need to see because if it's an e levy, uh, from the way it goes, it has to be explicit that, that that's an e levy. If it's a tax, it should be. A, if it's a charge, it also ought to be uh, told that it is uh, a charge. From the EMI side, there's been no new charges uh, introduced. Uh, I, I will not be able to speak from the bank side, so we would need to look a bit into details of this. Uh, it, but it's something that I will pick up. Uh, and ask the EMIs whether you know this thing has come to the attention. Fortunately, uh, the EMI chamber that is in formation also has G Money in it, you know, who which is a bank EMI as well. So, and then we could also we we are also in touch with the Ghana, Ghana Association of Bankers. So, you know, I could raise that with John as well, as well as our members, and be able to get to the bottom of it. If it's just, the taxes, I you know we are clear with the taxes. If there's a charge from uh, the bank side, I would not know. But I, I know that from the... Uh, if it is yourself, there should be no charge. So if it is to your, yourself, there should be no tax. Um, and so I would have to get back to you on that. Yeah, but, but, I, but d- I, I get the point. But t- techni- t- typically, the banks would have to communicate to the EMIs that they are doing such a thing because if I have 2,000 cities in my MTN and I want to transfer it to my bank and the bank has to take a, a bit of it. No, normally if you are sending it to your bank... There's no charge. The it's charge, the other way around. No, no, no. Exactly, okay. exactly. Yes, yes. So the you're saying it's from the bank side. Is there, It's from the bank yes. to the EMI I, that, that the charge... I, am, I, I, am, I cannot be definite. I, I just have to confess at this particular point that I need to look at it and, you know, find out. All right. You know, so I can't make a definite statement on that. Fair enough. The, the other point I want to make was that there was a specific deadline given by the government for people to regularize their Ghana card with their bank and also with their mobile money agent. So with their, with their mobile their EMI. So I just find it a bit strange that there would be this discrepancy, but you've explained that. So I'm not going to go back. I'm just saying for the record that there, we were given a specific time 
to update our Ghana card records. And if that has been done, that lacuna that will make Bernard transferring money from his bank account to his mobile wallet attracting a tax will not exist. Be that as it may, let's talk about what we are sure of. I remember one of the telcos tell us in July that from 1st July, cash out transactions below 2,000 will, will attract a fee of 1%. And cash out transactions from 2000 and above will attract a fee of 20 CDs, and that this charge will be charged to our wallet. I, I'm, I'm not sure what the logic behind this was, but is that is that is that an attempt to reduce cash out? Is, is that the logic behind this? I am, Bernard, you know, again, so when it comes to uh, charges of particular entity, you know, because I, 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 I might not be able to speak to it, but generally, your principle is that you would want to. Uh, keep as much cash on the system as much as possible. You know, so uh, in your pricing policies and all of that, that's one of the things you would want to be able to do. Because what you want to encourage is a lot more uh, trading with the uh, digital money rather than just putting it on and cash. We've, I think as a country, we've gone beyond just when we're using mobile money as money transfer. Now we need to move to the point where it's becoming... Uh, you know, a merchant payment system, so a payment system, so that once the money gets onto the wallet, you are able to use that. It's the reason why you find out that uh, in the, the, the when we're advocating for the e-levy, we're asking for an exemption when it comes to merchant payment, so that when you're using it for merchant payment, it should be exempted. Because what you want to do is that once the money moves in the merchant payment system, there's a lot more transparency uh, in it. Then you know the issues that you are dealing with about reducing the amount of money that is in people's pocket, money that is printed by Bank of Ghana. All of those things, you are, being, you are, you are able to do it. And then you are providing a lot of information also for your fiscal uh, policy side as well as your monetary side. So definitely, from a policy point of view, it's one of the things that you would want to do. What can you do to make sure you encourage a lot more people keeping the money on and then uh, you know, making it a disincentive for just wanting to cash out? A lot of people are texting this morning saying that they are charged by their bank from tra for transferring money from the bank to their wallet. N a number of people have mentioned different banks. Mm. So this seems to be quite widespread. So I want to urge you to engage with the bankers and properly understand what the charge is. Since you're saying that from the EMI side, you don't have any such charge. But I wanted to ask you a question. From 1st May 2022, the E-Levy was introduced. It's yeah. been... Two years. Yes. Or we can say a full year and a half that the mm. E-Levy. Has the chamber or the industry analyzed the effect of E-Levy on transactions, on anything? Is there, is there a way in which we can tell that this E-Levy has either reduced transactions or dampened mobile demand for mobile money services at all? Okay, so Bernard, we, we, did, we did a first report that we published. Uh, we did some GSME that I am pretty sure I can send, but that was, uh, we published the report uh, when we had just looked at the, when they did the reduction from 1.5 to 1%, uh, I think it was just a few months. So we are not looked at the effect, but it looks, and again, we are now collating, now that we've done the 1% for a while, we're collating data on it. So you, I can speak to be, when it was a 1.5. One of the things you you saw was definitely a reduction, and it was in phases. At the beginning, when the tax was introduced, it saw the volumes go down, it saw the values go down, and you saw a lot more of the high, uh, you know, values go up because uh, the e levy does not have a cap. So you know that the way e uh, mobile money is priced beyond a, a thousand CDs, for example. The, the charge was fixed. But then when we uh, E-Levy was introduced, that was not the factor. So we saw those numbers decline. The inter and then another interesting thing to do is that it was also important to look at the rate of growth. What was the acceleration of uh, 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 the usage of mobile money before the E-Levy came? And you could see that there was a huge drop, you know, the rate at which it was growing to when the E-Levy came. But the interesting thing you're beginning to see, and uh, just from looking carefully at the data, because we're not collating it and analyzing it, it the one percent has uh, reduction to one percent has had an, an impact on it. So when you plot the graph, uh, the tangent at which you're going, uh, it seems to have there seems to have been some recovery. 
but you also need to factor in uh, factors like inflation because if you were buying a ball of KNK at what two CDs now and then uh, you now are buying it at five CDs, then when you're sending money to your your son to buy uh, KNK, for example, you'll be sending a lot more money. So you need to factor uh, the fact that you know because prices generally have gone up, transactions might also go up. So you need to do some analysis about how inflation has impacted it. But definitely, from a country look, the 1% the one percent reduction seems to have improved factors. And then also, the E-Levy definitely had been the dumper. But there are other parts of the E-Levy that might also have worked. The number of people who have come into the tax net might have been widened because LGRA knows a lot more people because, you know, all of these merchants and agents and all of that, the merchants, because they wanted to avoid the E-Levy, you know, they all had to register with GRA and GRA would know them. So there's that factor as well. In terms of mobile money as a tool for financial inclusion, uh, as a tool for digitalization, E-Levy definitely was against the whole principle. You know, taxing the, the, the transaction itself, you know, had some negative effects. And again, I say that it looks as if the reduction has improved it. Uh, but a, a bit more detailed analysis of it uh, would, would be uh, is something we are doing, and I'm sure we, we would uh, share the, the results very soon. Mm. Whilst we were on air, two people I know personally have sent me evidence that they have the same Ghana card for their bank as they have for their telco. They transferred money from their bank account to their Momo wallet and they were charged. One of them says, Bernard, I have the same Ghana card for GCB and Vodafone. I transferred a thousand CDs and I was charged a fee of 10. This is contrary to the explanation given by engineer Ken. Another one, again, I know him. Bernard, I transferred money to myself, GCB to my wallet and I was charged 1%. I've updated my bank account and my Momo wallet with my Ghana card. Same thing. Three people have said the same thing to me. So, yeah, so Bernard, you, you see, so that's why I was saying that the pot, there could be a possibility of an update thing. So you've done the update. What's happening is that the L, the GRA system that we're using, the ELMA, has to see the update on both sides. So in the likelihood that any of the charging entities, either in the bank or the EMIs, have not done the update correctly, these could happen. So I will urge the, your three friends who have called that immediately they should call their banks if they, if they initiated it from there. If, whether it was a bank to wallet, they should call their banks, they should call their EMIs and also register them. And definitely those corrections then would have to be made and that refund has yeah. to be paid to them. But, but we, are, we are thinking of this from a point of EMI who is saying that you are not officially aware of any tax. So we probably have to speak to the banks to explain as well because... The sheer number of people who are saying this is happening to them, I doubt it if this is an update issue. <laughs> I no, doubt. So, uh, that's, that's again, no, Bernard, that's what I'm saying. That if it's a, you see, if it's a tax, that it will be clearly stated that you have, you have a, an e levy tax of this. If it's a, if it's a charge on the fact that I transferred money amongst myself, if the banks decide that, you know, now when you transfer money between yourself, there's a charge, I, don't, I would not know. Well, the that. banks call it a fee. When you look on the description... No, so if it's a fee, then it's not a tax. So then we need to speak to the banks. So you, I'm sure John and uh, Johnny Wa and the banks would be able to speak to that better so, than I so, would. Be. So it's a fee. Now, on the Richie Sky issue, there are a couple of comments that seem to corroborate what he's saying, right? Um, a couple of people have said that they... Um, go, go, go up. He says uh, he, he deposited money into his account in Jowlu and somebody asked him... or or he was basically told that he would be charged. I'm just trying to get the text message back for you. I, I can't seem to retrieve it now. But there seems to be a bit of that. Yeah, Mauli, if you can. I, I, I deposited about 2000 into my account just two days ago. The, the mobile money guy here. Yeah. He took 20 CDs for that. Into no, my so so account. the agent took 20 CDs? Yes, because he, yeah, he tells it's, it's me wrong. that without it's, it's it, complete. Going to do No, the, so that agent, the, you should report to that agent. To, and to who? Report, this is not the first time. It's a so cross. So report, report to, the, report to the, the EMI. I don't know whether it's an AT money, uh, Vodafone no, cash, uh, no, it's, MTN mobile it's money. it's MTN mobile money. And it is a so cross. No, so just the call, moment call. you... Anka Ken, take your time. When you transfer beyond 1,000 <laughs> CDs, anywhere, anywhere, No, no, you so pay again, you transfer to what? You to pay... My, you know, so you're not transferring. Into, okay, so I... Your, sorry, sorry. Depositing... Cash into no, my person. don't attract any charge. So you should not be paying to any agent. It is what and is happening. Report, 
So Ken, okay, what Ken, Ken, what he's saying is that when you yeah. deposit amount beyond a thousand, a thousand CDs, CDs, your agent will take ten percent. Yes. Of was it ten percent or one one percent one percent of the amount? Yes. He will take it in cash. Yes. And it's happening no, it's, it's wrong. all over. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. And you see, so definitely, uh, for uh, for the EMIs to know this, we as customers should be reporting, and we should also insist that there's no charge like that on their So we should report to who? Where? To, they, you, know, to, to, oh, no, you don't even need to go anywhere. Just call, call, um, uh, yeah, how do you call it? Your uh, EMI. So, uh, and then if you dial the 100 number, you'll be able to make, make that complaint. Wow. So, but are you aware of this? Has this come to your attention? No, so I, what, 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 I, what was happening, which we had spoken again, was at the point when the agents were asking that, uh, you know, they thought that the limit of the thousand TV should be increased. And, you know, uh, EM, the, the mobile money business is a regulated service. So there's no way you'll be able to increase, uh, you know, the, the thousand CDs that was currently existing without speaking, because that, that would result in increases in prices. Those things you can't do without engaging uh, uh, the central bank. And so the uh, EMIs individually, and again, when it comes to pricing, it's not something that the EMIs can come together and say we are charging a particular charge. So they would all have to look at it and then engage the, the central bank. And so when any some of the agents decided that they were going to do that, we told them I was illegal. You cannot be saying that when I am coming, and that one was more when you were coming to redraw money. So when you're going to redraw money and, you know, it got beyond a particular, then they were saying, so what then they decided to do was that when you come, we'll only do a thousand to you. But if anybody wanted to charge you extra, that was wrong. And so now if they are transferring it to now when I am depositing, deposit that should not attract any charge. That's completely wrong. That is wrong. It's not the way the system has been done. So uh, definitely, um, you know, with this feedback, I would pass it on to the EMIs. And then also, I would urge everybody that when anybody wants to charge you that, you know, you need to uh, say that it's legal. Also report to that particular agent because there are a lot of agents who, based on that, you know, would either be blacklisted or, you know, will be prevented from doing business. And so we'll, take that, we'll definitely take that up. Well, the... There probably needs to be a call center that the chamber also monitors because I'm sure you represent the interest of the, in, the industry. Yes, there are different competitors, but this is so widespread that it will be surprising if the, the telcos themselves they don't know. And by the way, some people are also telling me that when you even buy airtime through a vendor, they also charge you 10% of the amount. When you report to the telco, they tell you that that's how the agents operate. So the telcos even know that when you buy airtime through a vendor, they will charge you a 10%. Are you aware of this? I I I I would I would say I'm not too sure the uh, uh, a charge like that you know because even uh, at the point where we were discussing e levy when you buy uh, airtime it was not supposed to attract that and I'm not too sure of uh, of uh, this happening but there is definitely feedback that we need to take up. There's definitely feedback that we need to, you know, definitely the, the issues of some of the agents that might not go according to the rules. And so if that happens, again, that's what I say to all of us. The only way the system would know, though the system also monitors this and they do a lot of, uh, um, there's a lot of uh, mystery shopping and other things that are done to be able to take this out so that you can, you can take out the, you know, the miscreants among them. Uh, so those are, those are done. And sometimes I remember when you engage the, uh, you know, the agents will say that sometimes we are a bit too tough on them and all of that. But it's important that, you know, the rules of, um, uh, you know, surrounding this thing are the entry. Well, thank you. So you say you you check on the other issues I've raised and get back to us. So we thank you for okay. talking to us. Engineer Ken Ashikbe is the CEO of the Telecom Chamber. We've been discussing three issues. The first being a charge that Momo agents... Um, apply when you make a deposit of above a thousand cities some people have corroborated what this guy is saying that when you go to an agent that you want to pay an amount beyond a thousand they will say they will take one percent engineer ken says we should report the people to their telco but it appears the telcos are aware of this you see i i i you know engineer ken is a very good friend he's a, he's a senior brother he's an uncle an inspiration to many of us 
but with but, the greatest respect. <laughs> but you know, when you first raised the matter, okay. he created an impression as though this was a one of development and Richard Sky had been rocked. I mean, that was basically how you put it. Instead of confirming that, look, this was a matter that came up, the guys complained about what they were receiving and they had threatened that they were going to do A, B, C, D. Uh, and we had told them that don't do A, B, C, D and that we were going to do A, B, C, D to deal with your problem. But he created the impression as though, oh, Richard Sky probably didn't know uh, so much about this space and so when he went the guy pulled the first one over his eyes i mean i can please um this one uh, uh, so that's do point so, number yeah, one do something that's on check. the deposit into your wallet then the second one is transfer from your bank yes into your wallet too many people have confirmed so in the case initial plan this was that oh Maybe there, it, was an update there was a problem of an update issue because if Caleb Kuda Italy. is with a bank mm. and he pulls money into his own mobile money, to the extent that he has the same Ghana card number, mm. it's, just, it's not a transaction. It's just a transfer. But by the way, the money on your Momo account mm. actually sits in a bank. Yes. So it's not even... So when you pull money from your, your, your bank into your Momo wallet, if you are the same person, it's still within the banking system. That's right. So it should not attract... They need a charge. A charge. But the banks are calling different names. Processing fee. Fee. Charges. They don't even give it. They, no, it no, 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 nobody calls it a charge. Some people call it charge. Nobody calls it a levy. It's either a charge or a fee. Yes. And it's 1%. Now, this wasn't announced. And I think the banks are not being fair. Yeah. Because until people started reading the back end of their statements, they didn't even know they were being charged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The promise of Momo was made more useful by this policy where I don't have, I don't remember last time I stepped in a bank. Yeah. Because everything I have that I put in a bank, you can just I pull it through Momo and I make my transaction. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're going to charge me 1% for doing that, basically you are saying to me, don't connect the two. Mm -hmm. All right? Which brings me back to the issue of digitalization, digital economy policy that's been trumpeted. I mean, how do you allow such... What's the word to use? Funny, funny, funny. Yeah, it's serious. like you are... You are undermining. So you've come up with like this self sabotage. Come up with this big thing. Oh, we are doing digital economy. The economy is digital. Are, then you're going to apply e levy. And when you say you're going to get six billion, you even get half of that. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, let's reduce the thing to one percent. Now we are told it's picking up a bit. So clearly the e levy was a wrong decision. You even said the e levy because of that you won't go to IMF. Mm -hmm. You've gone to IMF. And e levy is still there. Mm -hmm. So if you say you give us e levy, I won't go to IMF because you know IMF really has policies that are very very austere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now. You apply the e-levy and then you go to IMF. You don't even have the decency to say, oh, okay, then we are going to remove the e-levy. Okay, Bank now you are sitting down and the banks are now taking our 1% when we want to work, work within the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Then you say you want to apply, a, 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 come with a cash light economy. I don't really understand. And there, there has to be consistency and honesty. Mm -hmm. I think there's a clear disconnect between the Ministry of Finance and their fiscal policies and everything the Vice President yeah. says he wants to do. Which is why we haven't heard him make any comment on the E-Levy. In fact, the only comment he made on the E-Levy was when he went on air prior to the E-Levy. He was interviewed and said he didn't think it was sensible to tax Momo. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So has he changed his mind? If he's changed his mind, can he explain? Do you get it? This is, we see, we, we, we must hold people to their word. If you say it doesn't make sense, did you say it in 2021 and now you've changed your mind? Mm -hmm. It's very important. And that the, a lot of things being applied, people are not told. Even we who are educated, we don't even know. Mm -hmm. How can banks be taking a 1% charge without even having the decency to inform you? Do you get it? You, the bank, you know that I've seen my Momo with my bank account. Yeah. And I did it for three years. You didn't charge me. Mm -hmm. You want to charge me. You want to say, oh, Mr. Avila, from next January, I'm going to charge you 1%. You didn't say anything. You've kept quiet. Thank Where is the integrity? Lack of it. You can move how they get up and say IFRS, something, something. You want to tell me that you're going to take a fee from me. You don't tell me about it. Mm -hmm. Anything you do with the bank, they must tell you. I think parliament should rise up and tell the banks that any amount collected prior to the public notification, because how can banks decide to just charge you 1% for a routine transaction quietly and then not announce it? You get it? Even in Ghana, when you want to charge any fee or levy, parliament has of to course, approve. Yes. And because this is tied to the e-levy policy in a way, it's not an e-levy, but it's a 1% charge, you cannot just get up and apply it. All right? And I feel the banks owe us an apology. I think, uh, what's the name of the guy? John Ewa. Yes. He has to come and explain. He has to come. All the banks are touting their, their, their uh, what do you call it? Their, their, their uh, policies on 
know your customer, transparency, giving you the best rates, and then you start collecting money, you don't tell anybody. Well, what is that? Is that how they do it in Kenya? <laughs> that they just get up and start collecting your money without telling you. And sometimes they don't even, they don't even send you the text. So sometimes you have to go for the monthly statement before you see that they've taken the one percent. I mean, some of the banks, at least, you know, you know, and you know, people have sent screenshots. No, Charlie, it's, we have to be honest. You see, because the politicians are not speaking the truth, the banks want to follow. We don't have to agree to that. Godfrey, what's your quick comment on this matter? I don't have good comments on the matter. <laughs> I'm not, as you know, I'm not a Momo user. <laughs> oh, I am a Momo user. No, no, no. no Godfrey is not. Oh, why? I'm not a Momo user. <laughs> but you are a digital ninja. Yes. I am a Momo user. No, not at all. Is it like a, is, 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 is it like a policy? I, I, or a I, 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 no, I, I lived in Kenya for nine on four years. I, I, uh, have, you, an, I have a very active m account. Uh, you don't think the way it applied here is the right Yes, thing I've, I've, I've had several oh, conversations so you with you about it. So you voted out of the MO system in Ghana? Yes. I, 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 I mean, it impacts me in other ways. Okay, but wow. so I don't know, keep a you personal account. So you know so much about it that you decide to opt out? I don't know so much about it, but I've used it in other places enough to know that I don't want to use the one that you're operating here yet. What's better about the place you went than what we are doing here? I told you, yours is primarily a cash out system. Which now we are being charged for. Yes, you understand. And it's, there's just, it's a process that constantly keeps getting, you don't understand it most of the time. You understand? And it's money. You understand? Lose, I, I don't know that someone would say, oh, what is one CD to reach a sky or two CDs to reach a sky? It's money. That's a lot of money. You understand? So for me, until I get, I'm still not comfortable with it. It's just a personal decision I took. That until I get comfortable enough, you know, to understand it, I am not yet going to opt for a Momo account. So I don't have a Momo account. But how was it? Just, can you just run us through how it, it ran in Kenya in your time? No, I mean, it runs everything. I pay everything on my phone. Ah, look at this. <laughs> I, now, somebody I understand not. the charges mm -hmm. and what they are. But I don't get charged for some of the things that we get charged. Ridiculous. Somebody's now telling me that he tried transferring money from his bank to his Momo wallet. Mm -hmm. And they are charging him a nine CD described as tax. So it's mm -hmm. different from the one Nathan showed me, which was fee. So the first interview with Ken, it was more, you are transferring mm -hmm. money from your bank account to your Momo. Mm -hmm. And then they charge you a 1% fee. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or they call it charge. Now this gentleman is saying, he wanted to transfer 1,000 CDs from his bank account. Mm -hmm. He mentions the bank, Stambik Bank, mm -hmm. to his MTN wallet. Mm -hmm. All right? Uh, fee, zero CDs. Tax, nine CDs. There's a problem there. Then he says, I tried. Yeah, so, so, so you see that thing is confusing now. Because when we discussed it with Ken first, it was like, if it's a tax, we would have known. Okay, so the question I have for this gentleman is, are you the same person? Yes. Is, are you the same person? Th does Stambik and MTN know I, you are the, the same, same person? person? Yes. That's the question. Yeah. Do you have the same Ghana details. card number? The details are the details. He says he is. He says he is. Oh, he's it, responded. It, yes, he's be, Because before you sync <laughs> your SIM to the bank account that belongs to you, yeah. all these checks are done. Yeah. They would have to verify that this is your card. You indeed have a bank account. You actually own the SIM card that you say you are using for the purpose. And then they will do the, the, the thing in front of you. So you see it very gado Or can Ghana. we say that because the SIM registration was not done by the Ghana card people? You remember there was a dispute. So all the banks, if you put your name, Rich Sky, mm. in their system, mm. your Ghana card will come out. Mm -hmm. But yes. the SIM registration was done by a different entity. Mm -hmm. Could there be a problem there? Do you get it? Because you remember the, the scandal that Blackwell had with the pastor? Mm -hmm. One of the things the Ghana card said to us was that it is impossible for anybody to have two Ghana cards. Mm -hmm. Nathan, there's no, if you mention Nathan Kwao and you so. put your ID, your, your thumbprint on the machine, it should there's only one Ghana card. So the point is there's only one Ghana card. So could the problem be that the mobile money company does not have the right details of the person? How Which is so, what Ken is trying to say. How so when, when, when I go to the bank, they ask, when you first go, they ask for your Ghana card. Yeah. If you are setting so up the bank, bank side is cool. What we are saying, what I'm trying to, I'm, this is a conjecture, right? I'm trying to say that you are Nathan Kwao. Yes. Your bank knows you are Nathan Kwao by your Ghana card. That's true. But the Ghana card was verified by this company that used this device. But when it came to the SIM registration, course, I, I the Ministry of Telecom, uh, the NCA decided to use a different system. 
You remember that time? Yes. So they then came up with this system where you put your, your, your finger on some device. So I'm saying that, is it possible that the banks they, don't have access to that data? Or the data that the telcos captured is Hard not errors. the same as the data on the Ghana card. There has to be some clarity there. Somebody is saying yeah. that the banks have included the Momo into the e-banking transactions. First, Momo, mobile, uh, mobile banking. Then the second, internet banking. And the third is ATM. Now, because they already charge a fee for mobile banking, they merge the mobile banking with the Momo transfer. With anybody. Hey, but that would be wrong. Is that, how, is that how things are done in Ghana? Uh, that would be wrong. What is the central bank doing about this? Johnny, why is the CEO of the Ghana Banking Association on a line to clarify a couple of points? Good morning, John. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Um, good morning. So, a couple of points. Yes, thank A number of people have complained that when they transfer money from their bank account to their mobile money wallet, they are charged what has variously been described as either a fee or a charge from their bank. I spoke to Ken Ashikbe of the Chamber of Telcos and he says... From the EMI perspective, they are not aware of any such charge and that when you transfer money from your bank to your Momo wallet, if you are the same person, it is not a transaction and therefore it should not attract a charge. Is this the same view of the bankers or the bankers have a different view? Um, it's, it's basically the, the similar view. Um, but the situation that um, we have observed is we have... Um, and some of these customers who have updated their bank records with the Ghana card, uh, unfortunately, the details that you know they have on the Ghana card, which they presented to the bank, is a different from the name combination on their telco wallet. So you are Bernard, maybe V Avle, but uh, and, and and the Ghana card validation combines both your name and. Your, 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 the ID on the car. So the system that does that authentication, and if it cannot verify that you are the same Bernard B, Avla, who owns an account at Bank B, then you are likely to have a, a, a charge, which potentially is a charge that uh, should be reversed. And it's a reversal mechanism that you know, has not been working as seamless as uh, you know, we're made to believe when we started this process of GRE. Um, there's a reversal mechanism. It is not automatic or immediate. Um, sometimes there's a delay in the reversal, and that is where people see some of these charges. But it is nothing new. No bank has introduced any new charge, as far as we are concerned, any new charge without recourse or notification to their customers and or a charge which is not properly so advertised in their banking premises on their website or their other platform. The other uh, um, consideration that um, um, we should all be mindful about is in, a, in an effort to encourage adoption of these uh, digital platforms, uh, the banks bundled, some of the banks, um, bundled the charges. So you find my bank, for instance, will say e-bundle. So e-bundle is anything electronic. So it is not just for uh, um, your utilization of maybe a mobile wallet. It is mobile wallet plus maybe internet banking platform plus other services that the customer may have opted for. You know, when we advise customers that when you are opting for services, the bank has a duty to explain the rationale for, 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 for the product and the any related um, and charges that potentially are associated with the product that you are opting for. And we advise clients to, you know, at that point mm. of adoption, mm. be conversant with, you know, the kind of charges. Yeah. But there's nothing new, nothing okay. has changed John. as far as uh, the banks are concerned. So from your first answer, which is very similar to Ken's answer, <laughs> the problem might lie in synchronizing the data that the bank has of me as Bernard Avle and the data that my telco has of me as Bernard Avle using the Ghana card as the basic descriptor. That's the same thing, Ken said, which is the same thing you're also saying. Am I correct? Yes, that is correct. Good. Now, if that is the case, do you not think that the banks and the telcos ought to come together to audit? Because you know there's something you guys call KYC. So you want to be sure that the Bernard Avle who's having an account with UMB is the same Bernard Avle who's 
having the MTN Momo wallet. So if we've noticed from the prevalence of people who are complaining that they are being charged this amount, then clearly there's a problem with the data that both you and the telcos work with, if you follow my logic. So that in your own interest for KYC and in the telcos' interest, there has to be a, a meeting of minds so that Bernard Avle at UMB is the same Bernard Avle at MTN. But as we speak now, the number of people who say they are being charged suggests to me, based on explanation, that there's a lot of errors in the data that the banks possess or the telcos or both about who they're really working with. Um, there, there is a potential data, uh, um, the data issue or data consistency issue here. But... Um, it may not necessarily be as simple as maybe laying it at the doorstep of a bank or maybe a circle. Because if a bank has verified Bernard Avle at the bank, the data the bank is holding on Bernard Avle is correct. So it is Bernard Avle who must demonstrate to the bank that it is the same Bernard Avle who has this telco number which is linked to that wallet. Except that perhaps at the point of registering at the telco level, there was a prefix or there was a certain name combination or some, some other data change that happened there. So one leg of the verification perhaps had a, a, a problem. But you know that during the same registration, there were some issues with the verification process. But for the bank's verification process, because you know we do it uh, uh, um, real time and on site, um, I can say with you know, quite a high level of confidence that um, so long as your data on the Ghana card is updated at your bank, the records your bank has on you um, is yeah. authenticated. Yeah, but, but John, so John, I, I get that too. But if, John, the, see, luckily for all of us, the government announced that the basic thing you need to register anything is your Ghana card number. So whether it is my account at UMB or my MTN wallet, there was a deadline for which we were all supposed to have one Ghana card number for every uh, SIM number we had. You remember that time? So, and from what I understand from National Identification Authority, John Ewa has only one Ghana card number. There can be, you can't have two Ghana card numbers for John Ewa. So if John Ewa is banking, banking with APSA and John Ewa has Vodafone, once he has put a Ghana card, so even if he writes John K. Ewa or John Y. Ewa, because it's the same Ghana card number that the bank has, that the telco must have, that discrepancy should not arise. Do you get me? So it's not about the, the syntax of the spelling of his name. The Ghana card is the basic unit. And since there can be only one Ghana card per person, it is impossible for that kind of error to exist if indeed John Ewa used the same Ghana card. So the explanation you and Ken are giving still does not fully lie because... Unless you're telling me that Ghana card is lying when they tell us that Johnny Walker only have one Ghana card number. Okay, so uh, and there, <laughs> there goes the issue once again. You know, we embarked on comprehensive public education when this Ghana card uh, uh, for verification purposes for banking transactions, you know, gained currency sometime last year. The preference of the banks was for it to be, as was initially planned, to be the sole identifier. But we had issues because not everyone has a Ghana card. Even people who are registered for Ghana card were not getting access to the car. Again, um, um, you have um, um, issues of um, um, offline verification failures and, and, and a whole bunch of um, complications around the verification, which my understanding is presently, you know, have been, have been, have been resolved. But we did not actually come to the point where we could say as bank that without Ghana card, you cannot do a, 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 a levy or um, other than the mobile money transfer from your account to your wallet. And so long as the bank has a valid ID of you on their file, you, you can still, the money is yours, you can't transact. And that is where the challenge is, that we haven't as a country come to that decision point where we say, if you do not have Ghana card, you do not have access to financial services. Well, John, I, I, I remember, unless I'm mistaken, there was a definite announcement that without a Ghana card, you will not be allowed to do any transaction. I even read it on air. I, yes, it, it, no, there no. was even a deadline, October 31, for the, for, the, for the telco side. And the deadline was given for everybody to make sure their Ghana card was the sole unit of registration for 
their financial services and also for their telco. So unless I'm yeah. reading a different hymn book. No, no, no. You, 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 no, we, we, we did. And, and even in our public education, we emphasize the deadline. But unfortunately, um, um, we are where we are, um, uh, where people have, you know, cash sitting in their bank account, and they are saying we have applied for Ghana card, um, um, NIA is unable to issue us a Ghana card, I have money in your bank, I want to transfer to my mumu, and I say no, when I have a valid driver's license on it, or a valid uh, 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 passport on it. So, it, 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 you know, it came to that point where <laughs> it is legitimacy of the funds. I mean, it, are you able to still identify this person? If the answer is yes, um, you cannot stop people from having access to their funds. And that is where we are. And when, when it more or less became politicized and we didn't put our foot down as a, as a country to say that Ghana card is the sole identifier for all banking transactions and mobile financial services transactions. All right. If we had all done that, then there would be a push factor. I, you know, I have a lot of uh, people coming to our offices here saying that, oh, they check uh, their, their, their accounts at their bank is not updated. But the bank cannot automatically update you. You must opt and go there to have your your card and records duly updated. And the banks have undertaken significant education on this. And, and, and Bernard, you, I'm sure you bear testimony to this, that banks have done extensive public education. Bank of Uganda did extensive public education. As community of banks, we came together and did extensive public education with all kinds of flyers everywhere. But we are where, you know, it is where it is, where... You know, the, the, if somebody doesn't have an immediate need of a financial transaction, you don't see the need to go to your bank to do the verification. Well, so the, the John, the, why I don't disagree with everything you're saying, the people who are saying they are being charged are all people who have Ghana cards who, before they can even deposit into their own account, have to be verified. So now, almost everything you do with your bank, you need to use your Ghana card. So, for me, I won't really belabor the point. The other question I wanted to ask you was, beyond the charge, there's also the question of the e-levy being applied for Momo transactions within a bank. So, for example, again, a gentleman said his own bank, he transferred a thousand CDs from his bank into his wallet and he was charged nine CDs and it was described as e-levy. In, in fact, a transfer fee and then an e levy. Transfer 10 CD transfer fee. 9 CD e levy. So this person yeah. a, a transfers a thousand CDs from his own bank into his own wallet. He's charged a transfer fee, which you have explained there could be a discrepancy. And then there's e levy on top. Is the banking sector collecting e levy for transfer within bank to wallet? For your own account, no. But um, um, as I said, for e levy assessment, I'm sure Ken may have, uh, you know, uh, um, clarified this before, you know, I joined the, I joined the call. Um, no bank is on their own calculating e levy. No bank. Every, can, can you repeat? Can you repeat what you said? Can you repeat what you said? No, no bank on its own is calculating e levy. What is chargeable or what is not chargeable? Every transaction, electronic transaction, goes to the ELMA system. That is the GRS system. That is where the assessment is done and feedback comes and the, 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 the various uh, charges are applied. If through this process, a wrong charge is undertaken, there's, there's supposed to be an auto-reversal mechanism where maybe uh, the fee is not applicable, but for one reason or the other, uh, either con uh, uh, connectivity issues or... Uh, maybe uh, a wrong assessment, um, a charge is levied, you know, there's supposed to be an auto-reversal mechanism that should come in to reverse this. I, I, I covered it initially by saying that that reversal, you know, it doesn't happen instantly. So there are times that you may have done a transaction where you may have wrongly been charged in levy, maybe today, but there's a credit reversal three days time. Of course, I mean, normally the credit reversals, we don't come to complain about them. But when a, a, the transaction happens now, a greater percentage of the time, there is a reversal, except that sometimes if you are a frequent user, it will be difficult for you to be able to link or identify each reversal to each of the perhaps illegitimate charges that you may have uh, encountered. 
But no bank is sitting there using calculator or their system to calculate e levy. It goes into the DRA platform and notification terms whether it's applicable or not applicable, how much of e levy that should be levied. That's how the system works. So we need to be very clear where you know the issues are. There may the, 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 there are issues, of course, and and JRA working on the banks and the telcos. You know, there's a committee, standing committee in place looking at all these issues. But when issues such as this charge that you referred to come up, I prefer that you know um, and we get evidence of it, and then we can follow through to see exactly what may have happened. Uh, 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 John, John, I'm happy. I'm happy to. That I'm happy to forward to you all the people who have sent me evidence of the e-levy and the charge from their bank to wallet at least at least about 10 people have sent me screenshots and, and, i'm, I'm and coming let me let me let me, just, let me, let me send them to I, you I to, so you no, can I follow up to, i just want to no you can send to me subsequently but yes i just want to also just mention this um when this issue came up sometime last month early part of january I got calls from some media houses who forwarded text messages to me. We did follow up, and the reversals were done subsequently, not because of our follow up, but the reversals were processed. Wonderful. Except that, as I've said, the reversals were not auto, as in almost instantly reversed. But sometimes there is a complaint that is lodged, which results in the reversal. Sometimes the system does auto reversal, and its okay. consistency in yeah. timing mm. is what perhaps is creating the problem. Okay. But I'll be very happy to yeah. receive. The, the data so, so I'll send them to you and to be clear, if the people are able to prove that they are the same person who owns the bank account as the, the e-wallet, then the reversal will be done because as far as you know, there is no charge for John Ewa transferring money from his bank into his own wallet if it can be proved that he's the same person. Th yeah. So this is the undertaking you are giving that if, they are, if it is proved that you are the same person who has the same account details, you shouldn't be charged that charge. I think it's in the e-levy the scope services. So um, it's not John Ewa who is in this thing. So we'll go to the document and, and apply the document the way it's captured. Uh, all right, fair enough. I just wanted to, on the e-levy side, you explained quite extensively, but I'm coming back to the point of, shouldn't the banks have alerted us ahead of time that they were going to charge the e-levy also on bank to wallet transfers? I, I, I think they should have probably given us a, a notification about that. Should they not have? As, as um, an industry that is heavily regulated, of course, um, uh, we don't just introduce fees without, you know, adequate notification to customers. When you, you, you bank, and I'm sure you may have received several notifications, even where there's going to be review, they get sent test messages, they put on their website, they put on their ATMs. So I, I, I almost speak for any particular bank. But the practice in the industry has been such that fees can never be introduced if the customer has not been informed. You cannot. Bank of Ghana frowns on it. And they have even recently issued a directive or a, a notice in, in that regard. So, you know, as a highly you know, regulated industry, we don't take a debit to customer's account, you know, lightly at all. It is only the customer who has the right to debit his or her account. If there is a fee, the customer must have agreed to the fee ahead of time and you can only do that through proper notification to the customer and as far as i know that is what happens you know uh, as, a, as, as someone who also banks in terms of you know i'm a customer to, to bank um I, I get these notifications of um please visit our website for our new tariff guide uh, if you go to the banking hall it's displayed it's a requirement you know, they publish occasionally, even Bank of Ghana occasionally also publishes the fees and charges in the newspapers. So there is nothing that is in between or is hidden uh, from any customer. Uh, so John, John, maybe, maybe I'll ask you to ask your members to forward to you the prior notification they gave to their customers before charging the e-levy and the one for bank to wallet to for you to be sure. Since you're saying that for such a heavily regulated environment, it will be difficult for somebody to do such a thing. You ask your members to send you the notice they sent to the customers informing them or letting them about this and then we'll see something. I'll, I'll, I'll take it at time. Thank you for talking to us on short notice. John Ewa is the chief executive of the uh, Bankers Association.
so much to do. So we, 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 I'm just saying something. We have two. There are like four equations here. The first one is the telcos, which Kenasigbe, to the extent that he could, spoke about. Second one is the banks, which John Ewa spoke about. There's the BOG angle, which we haven't been able to crack yet. It's an NIA. Yes, and the the the, the BOG has a head of fintech now. So I'm sure within the BOG, there should be some specialized person should be able to talk about this. Yes. Then there's also the National Identification Authority Group, who I think have been very clear about the usage and utility of the Ghana card. So the for which there should be no confusion. Mm, it's the number. So we will put somebody from the, or if we don't get, we'll probably get someone from <laughs> GRA. Because by the way, GRA will do this in conjunction with the NIA. So I'm going to put somebody on the line Mm. But trust me, the number of people and the caliber of people who are telling me that they are being charged, this cannot be a mistake. This cannot be a one-off. This is very widespread. It seems mm. systematic. Yes, it's not, see, it's not an error. You see, when you collect little money, little money, little money here and there, imagine if a million people or so yeah, are unlawfully charged these things. Money. Who is keeping the money? Yeah. Who is accounting for the funds that yeah. are being collected? Let's talk to Opokwe Free Asante. Who's the lead integration officer, GRA e Levy Technical Committee? <laughs> Wonderful person to have. Uh, Mr. Free Asante, good morning. Hi, Bernard, good morning. We're so grateful for your time. Uh, a number of people have complained that when they transfer money from their own bank account to their own mobile money wallet, they are charged both a fee by the bank and also e Levy by the same bank. So somebody sent a thousand CDs from his bank account to his wallet, his bank charged him nine CDs fee and then 10 CDs e-levy. I'm assuming the 10 CD is the 1% e-levy. Question, does the e-levy apply when I transfer money from my own bank account into my own Momo wallet? Right. Thank you very much, Bernard. Um, so just to quickly um, walk you through how uh, the system works even before we ascertain whether or not there's a charge when you make a transfer from your uh, bank to your mobile money wallet. Now, we know that the base identity to determine who a person is is now the Ghana card. Um, so when you go to the bank, you are required or it's an obligation for you to present your Ghana card uh, for us to be able to identify you. Similarly, for the ELMAS, that's the ELV management uh, platform that we've set up, which is connected to all the banks, uh, the payment service providers, and then the EMIs. Uh, before you make a transfer, we need to know who you are. So number one, the question is, have you updated your information, that is your Ghana card details with the bank? Now, if you have, there's a second component to it, which I think is now causing these challenges that we are experiencing. Now, when you present your details or you update your, your details at the bank or the EMI or whichever financial institutions you are uh, assigned to, that financial institution is also mandated to upload that information to GRA. And by GRA, I mean the e-levy platform. So even if you walk to the bank, you present your Ghana card at the bank, you have fulfilled your obligation. Now, the, um, the bank has a responsibility to also send that information to GRE e-levy platform. If the bank fails to update your details to the e-levy platform, when you make a transfer, uh, regardless of whether it is the account you are spending from belongs to you to another account that belongs to you, because the bank has also failed to uh, furnish GRA with your details, that's your Ghana card information or your TIN information, the platform wouldn't recognize that it is you, uh, Bernard, uh, sending this X amount, say 1,000 CDs from your bank account to your mobile money wallet. So if, if you are unable to, uh, if you're unable to find out who you are, uh, regardless of the amount you are being, uh, you, are, you are transferring, there will be an assessment. There will be a charge on that uh, transfer so, so let me get this straight. You're saying that the bank has to update the e-levy platform with Benaravles NIA details. Otherwise, the platform will not recognize that it's the same person who's transferring money from his bank account to his mumu. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. This, this is so because 
you know, um, we, we have to account for the daily threshold of 100 Ghana CDs. We also have to account for the 20,000 daily threshold across the ecosystem. So if you are making a transfer to someone, uh, say Bernard is transferring to say the Opoku, uh, and then Bernard is transferring 40,000 from his bank at GCB to Opoku uh, at Echo Bank. We need to account whether Bernard has not already exhausted uh, a previous transfer. So, for example, if Ben has transferred 10,000 from another account at Cal Bank and then proceeds to now transfer 20,000 uh, to Opoku, it means we have to cater for the initial transfer at Cal Bank. Now, the e levy platform consolidates all your transactions to determine whether you haven't exhausted your daily threshold. And to do that, we need the Ghana card as the baseline. So each bank, each charging entity has an obligation to push your information, that is your Ghana card information, to the e-levy platform. Although the customer may have already done that at the bank, the bank also now has the responsibility to do that on behalf of the customer. Okay. Once l- the l- 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 that, that's fair for now, but let me get this straight. My Momo with MTN, the money in there technically sits with the bank. So if I do a Momo transaction, how does the platform know that uh, I have done the transaction for which reason the e-levy must be charged? Because it could be that my Momo wallet sits with Car Bank, but my bank could be Zenit Bank. So just walk me through how the, the platform is able to know that it's the same person. Is it just the bank, uh, Zenit Bank in this case, that needs to send you my information? Or does the MTN bank in the, in the case of which my wallet is also need to send some information for the platform to know that it's the same person. Just clarify that. Okay, good. Um, so, yes, uh, MTN, uh, as in uh, Mobile Money Limited, which is uh, an EMI, uh, also shares that information. They manage your, your wallet. So they, they share that information or they upload that information to the platform. Uh, then the bank would also, on their uh, leg, do things. Um, so when uh, uh, Mobile Money does push your information to the e-levy platform, then the net bank also pushes your information to the platform. Uh, then we are able to know that for this transfer that you are making, regardless of the amount, whether it's a million CDs, so, so long as both charging entities have done the needful by sharing that information to the platform, yeah. regardless of the amount you are sending, there wouldn't be Good. any charge. So th- that, 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 that information you referred to, I want to assume it is my Ghana card number. Yes. Good. It is so, so let's take it one by one. I have 1,000 CDs in my Momo wallet. And I have a Ghana card number with MTN. I have 2,000 in my bank account. And I want to send that 2,000 to my Momo. Now, the bank has my, my, the same Ghana card number for me, as does the Momo company. So if I'm sending 2,000 from my bank to my Momo wallet, there should be no problem because... Whether the name is Bernard K. Avle or Bernard Avle, since it's the same Ghana card number that this person has, your system should be able to know it's the same person and therefore there should be no charge, right? Exactly. So just to clarify, um, the name is not of any use. The unique identifier is the Ghana card pen, right? Uh, because for your, for your name, I mean, someone else can have your, 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 your details. So the the, the the information that we we look out for is the Ghana card pin, which is unique. So so long as the Ghana card pin is same at Zenit uh, and your mobile money operator wallet, then regardless of the amount you send, there wouldn't be any charge. Yeah, so if you say the problem could be because the bank hasn't updated your platform, I find it problematic because for every transaction, it must be accompanied by a specific identity. And identity in this case is the Ghana card number. So Zenit Bank cannot transact anything without a Ghana card number. And I'm saying that the same, the, the Benalavale has only one Ghana card number. So it is impossible for Zenit Bank to say that they are transferring money to a certain wallet, but they don't know that it's the same person. Because the basic identity on your platform is a Ghana card. And from NIA, it is impossible for two people to have the same Ghana card or for one person to have two Ghana card numbers. So if all these premises are correct, I don't see how somebody can say, Bernard has transferred money from his Zenit bank into his Momo wallet 
but we thought it was a different person because the basic unit you need to know who is transferring the money is his Ghana card number. And there's Good. only one Ghana Good. card number for Bernard Avila in the whole world. So Good. there should be no uh, confusion there. Good. Let me clarify this assumption that you made, right? Uh, so let's, 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 let's look at the, the process. Now, if you say that there's no way your transfer would go through without uh, Zenit knowing your identity, um, I mean, that, that's, that's a bit of an assumption, okay? So what we've noticed is that for some of the charging entities, that's the banks and then the EMIs and, and the rest, uh, they, they haven't actually updated your... You may have worked to the bank and then updated your information at the bank, but as to whether or not that has been done in the system and updated on the e-levy platform, mind you, the only way a bank can know whether uh, it's the same person transferring is through the e-levy platform. Bank A cannot know that the recipient of the money being transferred to Bank B is the same person, okay? That information is not available to the bank. So that information is available on the e-levy platform because that's where the consolidation happens. And that's where the assessment uh, So, happens. So maybe you are the guy who is supposed to bring everything together. Because if Bank A is transferring money from my bank account, they know who I am because they have my Ghana card number. If they are sending it to another person, you are saying they may not know who they are sending it to find. But on your platform, you must know that it's the same person because that person has the same Ghana card number. Do you uh, get me? Good. So, so your, 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 your platform becomes the place where, you can call it the clearing house. Your platform is the only place where you can match the sender and the recipient because both of them have one Ghana card number. So if that if there's a, an error that they claim that is going to a different person, even if the bank hasn't updated, you should know because there's no way you will receive any money or send any money or get record of any money without knowing the person who it is being sent to or from. And in the fact, only way to know that person is the Ghana card number. In fact, that is how it, it works. Okay, you, you've actually articulated how uh, the, the e-levy platform works. So it checks the identity of the sender against the identity of the recipient. And if it's the same person, the exemption is granted regardless of the amount being sent. But the case that is happening now that we are seeing is the case that the bank, bank A making the transfer does not include the identity, which is the Ghana card. So if, if, if you make a transfer right now and then that transfer doesn't come along with your Ghana card information, then there is no way we would know who is the sender. For which reason, the person receiving that money, we then have to then... Uh, it, it doesn't work that but, way. But, 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 so but, 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 sorry to cut you. You have created a system to essentially make sure that government revenue is assured. How are you able to receive money or record of a transaction from one bank without knowing who the money is being sent to. In, se in essence, you're saying that if the bank has been updated their record, then it means that government could be losing money, right? Is it an option for the bank to say, for Rich Sky, I will send his Ghana card number. For Bernard Avila, I will not send. And GRA will sit down and say, well, the bank has an updated record, so I'll just be there. Then, you are, you are, then it means you, you, are, you, are, you are allowing the banks to pick and choose how to comply, which I don't think is supposed to be the case. Do you okay. have something? So, so if, just, if, just, if, just to clarify, just to, just to walk you through how that works, right? So that is where compliance and enforcement comes in. Now, if, if there's a transfer from a customer that Bank A is initiating, uh, and then there wasn't an identity attached or appended to that transaction, and it's being passed to the platform, that's where, regardless of the amount, whether it's below the 100 CDs or below the 20, there will be a charge. This is to enable, um, um, there's, there's a, a compliance regime, right? So that we, we are telling the banks that it is very essential for all customers to have their Ghana card details appended to each transaction that is being initiated. Number two, we've written so many, uh, the Commissioner General has written directives to every charging entity uh, that they ought to update the e-levy platform with the Ghana card information, or information of every customer, failure of which there would be sanctions. 
So when you look at the sanction regime, GRA has embarked on a lot of sanctions uh, with respect to e-levy. Now, we have to look at it from the bank perspective. What is it that is happening that banks are unable to append uh, identities to transactions? That is where we should be looking at. Uh, in terms of us uh, enforcing on compliance, we, the GRA has yeah. done it. But, 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 but Opoku, with the bank. seriously speaking, I mean, Look, we are talking about AML, right? Anti-money laundering. We are talking about knowing your customer. You're telling me that a bank can decide that they will do a transaction and despite all the government laws about Ghana card being the only form of identification, in fact, we're even told that your, your, Ghana card, your, your Ghana card number is your TIN number. So in fact, when I'm filling my form, there are certain times that when I use my Ghana card number, my TIN number appears. You're telling me that a bank can decide that they will not put that information out. In this 2024 of anti-money laundering, what if I'm doing drugs? What if I'm sending money to terrorists? How are you going to know? So if you're telling me that the banks can comply and if they don't comply, you enforce by sanctioning them, that completely undermines all the big English we've been speaking about, anti-money laundering, all these things they say, Basel 25, whatever they talk, Basel 4, Basel 5. Honestly, there's a big gap in the system. I'm not trying to blame you as a person, but I'm just saying that the whole thing sounds confusing and very unclear. The person at the center of all this is the BOG and the GRA. If you really want to make sure that you are collecting tax on the people you know, you cannot sit down and let banks choose and pick whether they will send my Ghana card number with the transaction or not. Because that's a major threat to the whole system. Do, do you get my let's, point? Let's, 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 get, let's get this understanding. I think you mentioned AML, which is very key in this whole value chain, right? Uh, what what is being discussed here is that there are two angles, okay? So even even though for purposes of tax or, or purposes of taxing the levy or assessing the levy, uh, at the time of the transaction, that information may not have been shared or uploaded to the common platform or the e levy platform. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean that we do not know who sent that transfer. Okay, so the bank has records of its customers. They know who each and every person, they know all their customers. But what, what I'm saying is that when it comes to assessing the levy, for purposes of assessing the levy, that transfer needs to be routed through the e-levy platform. So two things. The bank knows who their customers is. So when it comes to AML issues, I don't, I don't think there's a problem there. But when it comes to assessing the e-levy, that information needs to be routed through the e-levy platform. And that's where the conversation yeah. is being held. But, but you, are, you are only concerned about collecting your e-levy. So you don't care whether the bank, by failing to supply my, 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 my Ghana card number, I am being charged for a tax I'm not supposed to pay. Because if I am transferring money from my bank to my own Momo wallet, and I am the same person who has registered with the same Ghana card, you will collect my money because the bank hasn't done what it's supposed to do. So why am I paying 1% for a work that the bank has not done? When you find the bank, do you transfer the money back to me? Right, so that, that is where we come back to what we call the refund processes. So we have what we call reverse. I think uh, Mr. Ewa uh, talked about the automated reverse house, right? So there are two uh, scenarios that we've created to help customers. We have reverse house. Reverse house happens in a day. So if we uh, are able or if the bank is able to detect that, okay, this customer is sending money from their bank to their mobile money wallet, but for some reason, they were charged. Immediately, the bank is able to reverse and then to credit that customer's account. Now, if a day passes, that is one day passes, uh, that money would have then been transferred to the consolidated bank. In this case, let's say GRE. Okay. Now, if the customer would need to get their uh, funds back, it has to go through the bank where the transaction happened. And then the bank will now communicate with GRA that, okay, we, we wrongfully charged this customer uh, the e-levy, for which reason we are applying for a refund on behalf of the customer. And then GRA would look at the transaction to ascertain whether or not the refund is warranted. And then if it is, GRA then refunds that uh, uh, transfer, that, that e-levy uh, amount to the customer. So, by way of policy recommendation, 
what's the best way this can work? Because a lot of people calling this morning are saying they are being charged e-levy on um, transactions within their own ecosystem from my own bank account to my own wallet. We've noticed this problem. You've spoken about the reversal process, which is after the fact. Based on everything we discussed today, will there be any recommendations as to how we should proceed going forward? Because by the way, we all want government to get money. And for me, if you if you keep charging money that I don't deserve to pay, people can opt out of the system. We know the e-levy first round didn't do well because people didn't understand or like it. So this problem we are discussing can also affect people's options. They can go back to a cash-based society, which we all don't really want. So the GRA must be concerned if people are being wrongly charged and paid back after the fact. I hope you get my point. So what mm, what yes. is what is your recommendation as to how the telcos, the banks, the GRA, and the Bank of Ghana ought to work to to, to solve this problem? Yeah, so I, I think there's a standing committee um, that has been discussing um, the way forward with how um, the administration of the whole uh, electronic transfer levy uh, program, right, uh, from the BOG Ministry of Finance, uh, GRA, and then the charging entities as well. Uh, number one, we need to establish a baseline and we all need to agree that in order for um, customers not to be charged, uh, there needs to be some level of compliance from the charging entities. So what this means is that the more a charging entity is non-compliant, uh, it will, that has impact on their customers. So once, so for example, once the charging entity fulfills the obligation and then makes available the information that is necessary or that is required to implement e-levy, there wouldn't be any charges on their customers. So that, that, is, that is foundational. So the whole policy has to be looked at from another perspective, which is compliance. The more a charging entity is compliant, the more uh, their customers will, will enjoy the exemptions, and then not have reason to complain. That is what we, we, I think that's how the conversation should be approached. I, I thank you for your time, particularly on short notice, Opukwe Free Asante, Lead Integration Officer, Jerry. Hopefully you can talk again when your committee meets and comes up with more recommendations. So Opoku is the Lead Integration Officer of GRA E-Levy. Thank you, committee. So, Godfrey, you know the funny thing? I started by talking to Ken. Oh, they don't understand what Ken is saying. He's not speaking the truth. I called Johnny Gwai. I said, oh, Johnny Gwai. Even this guy, people are still saying no. You see, initially, Ken said, we, you know, they, the EMIs, they don't know anything about any charge. It's the banks. The banks will say, oh, we, you know, we are not collecting. with the Ghana thing. They are basically saying, for them, not all the banks may have all the information and push the information out. All right? Then, tax people. Tax people are saying, well, the banks may not be updating Mm. on the Ghana card details of the person sending. So it's possible the person sent to himself but the system treats as a different person. Mm. I really want to know what the BOG thinks about all of this. They are the only person who hasn't spoken yet, right? Mm. Take some comments from me. And in all this, they should be very concerned. Yes. You know, about... It's money. Or... Yeah, because, you know, yeah, we don't play with scared. money. We don't play with money. You see, it's quite obvious there's a gap somewhere. It's terrible. And it needs to be shut it's quick terrible. so that customers and their monies... But do you, do you really believe this explanation that because almost everybody who's telling me <laughs> that they are being charged. Sky, these are people you know who work in, some of you work in banks and they are telling you that I have the same Ghana card that I've used for my Momo as my bank. So how can a banking system say they don't know you are the same person? It is, it is not I, possible. I don't, I don't understand. It is and they are saying possible. because the bank has not updated. I mean, I mean, so you see them, you're watching them that they have not updated. How? When they collect the information, it is possible in this day and age to know that they have collected the because information. I know I, because sometimes some of the banks, when you even go to deposit money, they take your Ghana card. Yes. So how can a bank put information about my transaction to the Ghana, to the e-levy platform mm -hmm. without adding my Ghana card number? It doesn't make sense. Do you get it? It doesn't make sense. And, and, and Bernard, I, I mean, you know, a good friend of mine asked a, a very important yeah. question about if you do not know the ID of the person to whom the transfer is being made, why didn't you t terminate the transaction? Exactly. You understand? Because exactly. you have to know exactly. who is sending what exactly. from where to Exactly. Who. 
And if you cannot match that, oh, this money is coming from God. And you've said and you've told us that you are not using names. Yes. You are saying that when it comes to this thing, it's Ghana card number. And and NIA is saying that there is no way Bernard will have two Ghana card numbers. It's not possible. So how so somebody may not be telling us the full story. <laughs> 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 and and you say Bernard, the rhythm angry is that look. These small, small, small monies that the people are collecting. When it aggregates. When it aggregates, it's a lot of money. You can buy a house at Trasaco Valley. Trasaco Valley serves is small. You can buy a whole city. <laughs> because, it's, look, we were told recently that what? So many trillions of Ghana cities yeah. were, were, were moved around through mobile money. Yeah, 1.9 Ima- trillion. Exactly. Imagine that just 10% of that. Oh, even one, oh, half percent of. Attracted all these illegitimate, unlawful, illegal fees. And someone is keeping that money, redrawing it small, small. Imagine what they can do with it. <laughs> so redrawing it small, small. Yeah, that, that's what it is. Because as we speak, nobody is accounting for it. We are complaining that the money is being unlawfully collected. Everybody is packing the bag. Oh, this one, it is these people no, who are doing thing, that. The thing is, everybody, everybody is collecting. So, Momo agents are collecting their own. No, it's a jungle. Though. Yeah, banks are collecting their own. Think about Sky. GRA is so sitting so somewhere in the middle, so struggling it and saying, Sky, okay. Sky has... 2,000 cities. Yes. He goes to his Momo agent that he enjoyed, that he wants to give the Momo agent 2K. Yeah, the Momo agent in says, his own account. The Momo agent says he should 20 charge 20 cities. 20 cities. Otherwise, he won't do it. So he says, let me go to GCB and put the money there. He puts the money at GCB and says, okay, now let me transfer the money from GCB, GCB to, to my Momo wallet. Right. He's being charged the one percent again. Too. 10 cities. So do you know what they are saying? Keep your 2,000 under your pillow. That's what they are saying to you. They are saying that if you are wise, don't give it to the Momo agent. Don't send it to the bank. Keep it in your house and go and pay it to the Yokegari seller. That's what they are saying. I'm telling the GRA that if they don't solve this problem, they will not raise the revenue they want. So let's not see it as, oh, we are collecting money. No. People will opt out. The number of people who are telling you that they are being charged illegally is a lot. So if the government really wants this cash light system, because I will always say to you, the best way to bring people in is to first make it free and costless. If all transactions in Ghana were electronic, do you know how much money government will make? So much money. Mm-hmm. There's so much money in marketplaces that government cannot trace because it's informal. Mm-hmm. The digital economy is your surest route to formality. If you can approach it with this lax attitude and say, oh, the banks have not updated, the telcos are not sure, if, the, if somebody's calling, go and report. Really? He should go and report to who? That he has his 2000 Why should he report? He will keep it in his house. Now, brown envelopes will increase. Yes. You see, so that's why I'm, I'm going back to the vice president. You see, this, these are the cracks. We are in a hurry to sell a good story. Mm-hmm. If you want digital economy to actually work, you must reduce the cost of people engaging the system and using the system. Exactly. Where you then base it on volumes, mm-hmm. there is a missing link that has to be cracked. Mm-hmm. And we expect some clear policy direction from that office. Let me give you messages. Guys, I worked at the bank for eight years before I, I resigned. Due to the Momo interoperability, the volume of transactions using internet banking, ATM usage have reduced, affecting the revenue stream from those services. The banks must find a way to offset the cost of deploying ATMs and setting up online banking systems. The banks are paying so much in terms of taxes and operational costs, which also went up as a result of buying the card and fingerprint verification machines. Someone must pay. Mm. We must understand that every policy action by the government will affect us at the end as end users. And that is just that. Um, a couple of people also not very happy. Someone says, greetings, Bernard, mm-hmm. Richard, and Godfrey. Mm-hmm. I have also not registered for Momo, uh, ever. Ghana is, of, is a gangster mafia crime scene. A lot of comments. No over. honesty in public service. The private sector is following suits. More comments. Messages. Bernard, what is upsetting about this policy is the logic of it. So because you can't reach out, you can't reach a lot of people who don't pay tax, we, the salaried workers who pay the tax, now have to pay tax on every transaction we do with the same amount we pay tax on. Can you imagine? It doesn't make any sense. Uh, a few comments on this as well. Uh, 0549986996. Bernard, very soon, e level will be charged on ATMs. What is the bank guy talking about? Until recently, there was no charge. So where from the new charge? I have linked my Ghana card at both Ecobank and MTN, yet I'm being charged when I move funds from my bank to my mobile wallet. So now, they want to punish us by asking us to make corrections at the bank or the telco after we've queued someone to register our SIMs. What is wrong with us as a country? The John and Ken guys have been defensive. Very, very unfortunate. Comments coming in from Gomla Galevo. Mm-hmm. Uh, another 
uh, one coming in. Okay, Nathan. Nathan. Yeah, this one says the banks are riding on e-levy to cash in 1% charges. Okay, to cash in. 1% charges have been going on for a long time. Example, if I transfer 20,000, I pay 200 to the bank and pay 190 on e and 190 in e-levy. From my analysis, it's very costly to, to transfer from banks to bank that to transfer from bank to Momo. Mm. It says, I use Godfred as a case on this. Banks are cashing in more than government uh, when it comes to bank to Momo. Mm. Um, but at the reversal, he talks about about nine times out of 10 doesn't happen. I've been chasing refunds for wrong, wrongful e-levy charges since the beginning of last year on Vodafone. As a result, I have stopped using the Vodafone cash and I rely on my bank app. This one says, everything make basa but we still no lose hope. George from NKCT. Hmm. There's something going on that they aren't telling us. <laughs> Even transfers between MTN to Vodafone, MTN to Tigo, etc., belonging to the same person are being charged, either tax or, f or fee. This started in December. So if I go back to the telcos and prove that I'm the same person, mm -hmm. will the taxes or fees be reversed? Mm. I've had so many tax deductions from December between telcos that I thought it was actually a new tax I may have missed. Mm. This one says, these illegal e-levy deductions on transactions are deliberate. Mm. The whole thing is like a scam in a nice form. Mm. Imagine being charged automatically and illegally and then they turn around to tell you to come to their office if you are affected. Look at that. Slide from Oyarifa. Mm. This one says, I don't think what Richie Sky said is the Momo guy's own policy and is not from the government or the telcos. There's one more here. Bernard, the system should have mandatory field i.e. Ghana card, without which the transaction should not go through. Very simple. The GRA is, only, is either lazy or they are thieves. This is the comment that's coming in. And Bernard, we put out a poll uh, on, on social media. Yes, Let's I'm announce the result when we come back. We'll take a short break. This is the City Breakfast Show. It's a quarter to ten. We're spending the whole day on this matter of wrongful deductions, taxes, and charges. Send us your views. 54 Stay with us. Unleashing the power of relevant radio. This is City 97.3. Hey, so what goes into building quality structures? I mean, literally, what goes into it? Wujaf, you don't want to be sitting here somewhere worrying whether or not you did a really good job. It'd be a very simple equation. If there's no diamond cement in the mix, Massa, forget it. Don't start cry. Man, yeah, diamond cement has been providing builders, block makers, and construction companies that peace of mind for years. Diamond cement is 42.5 R-grade cement. Unbeatable quality made right here in Ghana. And because we have your pocket in mind, we provide 32.5 R-grade so that everybody gets your own. No long talk, oh Jack. If there's no diamond cement in the mix, don't start. Locate Diamond Cement Ghana Limited nationwide with factories in Aflao, Takradi, and Buipe, or call 0244-313-368 or 0540-111-978 or 0202-021-175. Diamond Cement, still as hard as a diamond. Ah, honey, I was looking for just 50 CDs this morning for the taxi driver. I searched through all your trouser pockets. I couldn't even get one CD. Hey, Why? Hey, madam. She, now, no more to boo. Every Peswa is going to the bank. <laughs> hey, what kind of pepe is that? Ah, haven't you heard? I want to increase my savings so I can get 10% reward in the UBA Super Savings promo. Hey. 10%? Oh yeah, 10%. Open a new account or grow your existing account by a minimum of 300 CDs each month and get the chance to be rewarded 10% per annum interest rate on your growth every month. Whether regular savings, kiddies, next gen or target customers, this is your chance. Ah, honey, you didn't go to the market again. I was going no, until you told me about the UBA Super Savings promo. So I went to put the money in my account. Ah, ah. So what, what are we going to eat? Hey, gentlemen, you're on your own no? Me too. I want the reward some. Why? <laughs> UBA Super Savings Promo. Earn more, enjoy saving. UBA, Africa's global bank. Join the conversation on the City Breakfast Show on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash city97.3, Twitter at twitter.com forward slash city973, and Instagram at instagram.com forward slash city973 with the hashtag CityCBS. Things know they be. Charlie, life know they go. Me, I need Momo. Me, I need Momo. It's Charlie, mommy, Momo. It's Charlie, mommy, Charlie. 
Life no they go, it be top I know they see cause me I know no When see Charlie mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, give me momo, give me make I just give up cause life makes slow And Charlie give me formula, the boy stick blow But for now mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, give me momo, give me momo I wake up in the morning, challenge nothing in my pocket. No feel what for your boy, how I go feel move rocket. It no be easy for the GH, challenge you for Safa and the MP getting V8. I take my paycheck and it be taxes in Kwan. Politicians like Ole, you our tactics in Kwan. The speeches and the long talk, challenge they be too much. But we know they see things and they know they do much. It be one this, one that, one plan or another. One presser in an interview, we know they help a brother. Go the market, see the prize, then they rise on very supervised. They go bring tears to your very eyes. Boys know the seat up, challenge me the tire When I ice make red, cause the system be fire Make the boys give me momo, make the boys sort me out Make the boys come through, cause the game brought me Things know they be, life know they go It be top, I know they see, cause me I know no When see Charlie, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, mommy momo, give me Mami momo, Nathan Mami momo, mommy Hey! Start the new year with easy and secure movement with SG Ghana. Get reliable motor insurance and receive free fuel for your car. Buy or renew your sound drive insurance with SG Ghana from now to 31st of March and get free fuel of up to 500 CDs for your trips. It's time to hit the road with reliable insurance and free fuel. Visit any SD Ghana branch today and get the cover you need for your car plus free fuel to take you places. Sound Drive Plan is underwritten by Alliance Insurance. Terms and conditions apply to Society General. The future is you. And if you're looking for a one-stop solution for all your needs, look no further than the Breeze app. The Breeze app has the most affordable rights in town and you can also pay your ECG smart meter prepaid bills on the app. The app also offers you instant car insurance and gas cylinder refill in minutes. We've got you covered, but that's not all. You can even shop for items from any shop or market near or far and Breeze will deliver them to you instantly. Breeze can ship it right to you here in Ghana. Say goodbye to stress and say hello to convenience with the Breeze app. Mami, momo, mami, momo. Download the Breeze app on the App Store, the Google Play Store and experience the ease of having everything you need in just one app. Now, Standard Water is the trusted brand you should be friends with if you are trying to solve your water problems. So, if you want sachet water, bottled water, dispenser-mounted jar water, or customized water for your parties or special occasions, Standard Water is your number one choice. Call them on 0202-055-703 or 0547-334-385. And this ad is FDA approved. Now, if you're a new, if you're a business owner, insurance is credibly important. When you have a business, you are not only responsible for your livelihood and goods, you are also responsible for uh, your clients, uh, customers, and all of that. So, SIC Insurance PLC has an array of insurance policies for your business. It covers property, workmen's compensation, key persons, motor, public liability, business interruption, and so much more. Talk to SIC Insurance today on 0800 100. 055 or 0302 823100 and you'll be glad you did SIC insurance our promises are sacred the speeches and they're long but we know they see things and they know they do much it be one this one that one plan or another one presser in an interview we know they help a brother go the market see the prize then they rise on very supervised they go bring a few more insightful comments on this topic Nathan and Co this one says Bernard the agents do not want to transact more than a thousand CDs. This is explanation for which is Kai's problem. Okay. Kai, so come and listen to this. Now, this is the reason. Telcos pay four CDs on a thousand CD withdrawal. Remember, withdrawals above a thousand CD attracts just one percent fee. That's 10 Ghana CDs. Four Ghana CDs goes to the agent. So if a client withdraws 10,000 CDs, the agent gets only four CD commission. Now, agents, of course, they travel to banks for cash, they operate shops, rent, electricity, etc. To manage these costs, it won't be business-wise to allow transactions above 1,000 CDs for mere 4 CD commission. To mitigate this, they advise that clients pay more for such withdrawals or they ask you to withdraw in thousands. This is from Enoch. Remember, the agent makes more commission from small, small withdrawals. Please tell the banker that we citizens do not capture these details ourselves. We only provide ID and the telcos and the banks capture. How does that mismatch affect us or how is that mismatch our fault that's what you're trying to say the only idea acceptable is the ghana card for both telcos and banks how is their data inconsistency please check this this is the exact question i was asking 
Um, yes, another one. Ben and I have a business merchant registered with business certification and bank account. Also holds same business certification with my Ghana card on it both. Now my merchant, not agent, Momo linked to my bank. Now I move cash to bank or from bank and they charge me. Now the worst is sometimes the transactions will not be successful, but the charge will be taken. It takes a week for you to get a refund. All right, so there was a poll that we put out and we asked people to tell us the so here's a question we asked on twitter are you charged a fee when you make a transfer from your bank account to your mobile account join the discussion with the hashtag ctcv as well guess what 88 percent of the respondents said yes we are charged a fee when we make a transfer from our bank account to our mobile wallet. only 12 percent said no so sky the eyes have it and this is a very, very big one. So almost nine out of 10 people who we polled say they are charged for sending money from their bank account to their own mobile wallet. So if they are claiming the bank have not updated this, their record, the platform of GRA with their um, um, Ghana card details, then it means that they are not doing it for anybody. Yeah, that's right. You know, if, if this number is to be believed, it is it is serious serious indictment on the system. Can just give up because life makes slow. You know, Bernard, see, I, I just stepped out briefly, and mm -hmm. every single guy out there was telling me that what we are discussing is something they've been dealing with, but they don't know who to tell. <laughs> and these are people who are, with the greatest respect, lower down the ladder, and they make small small money here and there mm. to take care of themselves and their family mm. along the street you go there you see them mm. and this is a matter that they are discussing mm -hmm. now the question you ask yourself is do our policy makers just make policy and mm -hmm. throw it out there without mm. actually policing the policy to ensure that it is effective mm -hmm. it is achieving what it is supposed to achieve people it should not touch it is not touching them things people are not to collect they are not collecting them mm. because the whole idea of bringing about this mobile money thing is to help us get to a certain destination mm. we want to reduce the circulation of fiscal cash in the system mm. so that through that we can improve on many other things you can track government revenue because you know which money is going where why somebody is being paid why he's not being paid you can reduce corruption and you can deal with all kinds of things in the system you know terrorism and all these problems that come with money in circulation but it seems that people have created a convenient mm -hmm. loophole in the mm -hmm. system, mm -hmm. which they themselves know mm -hmm. how they are exploiting it. Yes. Because you cannot be unlawfully collecting money. You are not accounting for it. Mm -hmm. If you were accounting for it, we will see it somewhere. Yeah, that's true. Look at the percentage of people. 88% of people we have polled mm -hmm. say they have been unlawfully charged. These the these poll was put up about an hour ago, mm -hmm. and we have 706 votes. Yeah, so far. Seven and six votes, of which 88% say Exactly. Yes. So it is a widespread something. Mm. This is something that our parliamentarians must equally be interested in. Yeah. Because the people you represent are telling you that they are being unlawfully charged things that you yourself as MPs have not imposed. Mm. So questions must be asked. The finance committee should be interested in this matter. And I would expect that the MPs who care about all of us We'll be raising this matter when the House resumes sometime mm -hmm. later this month on the 6th or so. They should be raising this matter. Mm -hmm. The Bank of Ghana boss should be hauled before, you know, the committee to answer questions on this matter. Mm -hmm. The tail calls must face questions. Yeah. The banks must come and face questions on this particular matter. Between it the, cannot be right. Between the GRA, the Bank of Ghana, the mobile financial service providers, EMIs, the 20 money people, and the banks, mm -hmm. those four have to be invited. Yes. You are right. I think the Joint Committee on Communication and Finance, finance. must be brought together to probe this yeah. because this affects constituents everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that the banks are not being fair to us. They should even have announced it before they mm -hmm. started applying it. And, and you know, Bernard, they must, we must be able to ascertain mm -hmm. how much in unlawful charges or fees they have collected yeah. since the start of this thing. Yeah. And all the people who were affected the people responsible for collecting these money, they must refund them. Mm. There must be sanctions applied because we cannot allow these kinds of things to go on. In other jurisdictions, you can't go and collect somebody's money, small, small like that, and you, you go unpunished though. You face the consequences for it. Mm. We should not tolerate that in Ghana. Because for all you know, somebody is sitting, all he does is to sit at home 
And then the time will come, they will come and give him share or her share. Mm-hmm. Then you enjoy it because there's some loose money somewhere coming in from somewhere, small, small. They aggregate it and somebody is enjoying. Mm-hmm. Let's not allow this. 